Hi, everybody. Hello there. I'm Jerry. And I'm Linda, and this is Gizmo. You know, our channel started by accident, but now we're here every Monday, and we try to be here every Thursday, bringing you shows about life in Central Florida, specifically our hometown of the village is Florida. Mm -hmm. And it started out, we were just trying to talk to our kids, and right. now... We're hopefully giving helpful hints to everybody out there. That's right. We enjoy making this news co show for you, and let's enjoy today. We're going to bring you tidbits that hopefully are interesting to everyone. The days are getting longer. It, yes. We had a time change. We, we lost an hour of sleep. <laughs> Did we? Because mm -hmm, it springs forward in the spring. All I know is yeah. about a month ago, it was getting dark at 5.30 p.m., and mm -hmm. now it's going to be daylight until almost 8. Yeah. And it will be light after nine o'clock soon. Right. I remember so. as kids, we would stay outside oh, and ride it. our bikes till nine o'clock at night. I love to have more daylight. And when the lights came on, you had to get home. <laughs> when the street lights come yeah. on, you went, that was your signal? That to was home? our signal, get home. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, we're, we're like the old school parents. We always told our kids nothing good happens after midnight. That's right. Of course, here in the villages, that means 9 p.m. <laughs> nothing good happens in the villages <laughs> after 9 p.m. That's the truth. All right, today you're going to find out what they do with a nuisance alligator. And a reminder about golf cart safety. Rising complaints about golf greens. And it's a special day today. It's Harold Schwartz's birthday. Wow, the founder of it all here in the villages. And oh, are we so thankful. And as they say on Facebook, happy heavenly birthday, Harold. Mm -hmm. Is it financially doable for a single person to buy a home here? All that and more. Hit it, Wally. Send us your questions, we've got your answers, Jerry and Linda's Mailbag Monday. We're going to start off today with Sweet and Salty. Linda's going to give you the salty first. This is from Edie. You really do think you are something special. In fact, you are boring AF. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Edie, that hurts. It didn't hurt me because I don't know what you're talking about. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt too much, though, Edie, to tell you the truth. We always <laughs> consider the source. But let's go to our good letter. And this one is... I'm going to make it anonymous because I took it off social media about the villages. Played a round of golf today, and on the way back, my friend's golf cart had mechanical problems. We waited by the side of the road in the shade under the beautiful Spanish moss trees, surrounded by blooming azalea bushes. Perfect spot to be stranded. The best part was all the wonderful villagers who pulled over to offer assistance and ensure we were okay. We're so lucky to live here. I love people with that attitude, attitude, with that positive, happy attitude. I do too. We are very, very, very thankful. It goes a long way in mm -hmm. making your day good when you're positive. You, you know, you're more upbeat. Right. People like you more. Mm -hmm. Take a hint, Edie. Come on, girl. <laughs> We're not planning these bloopers. They're just happening all by themselves. <laughs> no, they're happening by me, <laughs> by myself. This is from Marco in Niagara, New York. I always wanted to go to Niagara I Falls. I do too. Well, I have never been. I've seen pictures. It looks beautiful. A great big waterfall things. up there, isn't there? A big one. And I hear some people go over that thing in a barrel. Ah! You're not going to try that. No, I'm not going to try that. <laughs> Marco asks, I know a lot of places in the world have noise ordinances. So is there a certain time you are not allowed to be on your golf carts? If so, what's the time? I'm just curious. I don't know. You're crying. I know. Yeah, I got, she yeah, literally has tears coming in her face. I cr when I laugh, I cry. Can't help it. Yeah. Anyway. Um, you want me to answer? Yes. No. Marco, <laughs> you can ride your cart anytime you please down here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah. if you want to go out at midnight in your golf cart, you're totally welcome to yes, do that. Are. There are no curfews here. Make sure you have your lights on. Yeah, they, all these golf carts are well equipped. I mean, mm -hmm. in fact, I got an email yesterday. Somebody said, why don't they put lights on the cart trails down in the new section? Right. Well, I don't know. But I do know that all the 
and I mean all the golf carts that we know of have nice headlights. Turn those headlights on and you're like a car driving on a road. You right, know? and then some of them have all those extra special little uh, liquid lights all around too that yeah. glow in the Visibility. dark. Visibility. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, you can, you can go out in your golf cart anytime you like. A golf cart driver was injured after making a U-turn on the multimodal path that uh, runs along Turtle Mound Executive Course. Mm. We have pictures, but I don't have permission to show you the pictures. Right. And it's just another chance for us to tell you to please wear your seatbelts. Mm -hmm. We feel like they're really important. I took a buddy golfing the other day, and he did not want to wear the seatbelt. He said his cart flipped over one time, and, oh. and he was thrown out of it and didn't get hurt, I guess, as bad as he could have. So he doesn't want to wear it. Myself, I want to wear it. I want to wear that seatbelt every time I go out. Our first yeah. cart didn't even have seatbelts, and we had them installed. Right. So my advice, get yourself some seatbelts if you don't have them. Right. By the way, the driver that turned a U-turn, this is on a multimodal trail, just driving along, made a U-turn, somebody come around, bam! He got a ticket for careless driving. So you can get tickets on golf carts. Yeah. And in fact, I was told just yesterday that there are new golf cart police vehicles out here and wow. that they personally knew somebody that got a ticket for crossing a white line in their golf cart and had to pay $161 for that. Wow. And if you're driving more than 20, you can get a speeding ticket, which could lead to your cart being licensed as a, a, legal, or a street, legal, street vehicle, legal vehicle and you'd have to pay insurance, you'd have to pay license wow. tax. You don't want that. So go the speed limit. Yeah, these golf carts can be dangerous, and we hear about wrecks, you know, one every month or two. Uh -huh. So we don't we right. don't want you to get hurt. That's not right either. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. I I just I think I just fell asleep. right good they're, they're terrible anyway keep up the videos going you both are <laughs> somebody needs to practice punctuation <coughs> she's cut down to one pack a day and uh Next two questions are about golf court course. <laughs> it's, <laughs> course. <laughs> it's Howard Schwartz. Oh dear, <clears throat> it's Harold. It's hard. It's hard. <laughs> There's been a lot, big gap in we there. We will. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody didn't turn my mouth on today. This is going to take a while. These next two questions are about golf course conditions. I lived in Sable Chase for 17 years. I've never seen both the fairways and the greens in such poor condition on the executive courses. I'm ashamed to have guests play after bragging about how many courses we have. And here's another one. We, pl we played Palmetto today. The greens were in horrible shape and were unplayable. They were so bad, I called the pro shop and reported the conditions and suggested they close the course. I've never seen greens in such poor shape, and that is no exaggeration. Just a heads up to stay away from Palmetto. Wow. You know what I did? I went out and played Palmetto yesterday. <laughs> he did. It's the luck of the draw. When you put your request in, mm -hmm. they plug you into a course, and right. I got plugged in. So I took some pictures for you. You can see them scrolling mm -hmm. while I talk right here. Mm -hmm. They're not lying, the greens are in bad shape. Keep in mind though, this is the absolute worst time for golf yeah. courses because you, we haven't started getting the rain yet. No rain. And the ponds have been no. drained down and they are in bad shape. And it's also snowbird season. It's and lots seasonal. of play, they're getting a mm -hmm. tremendous amount of play. Right. Still, it was rough and um, I'm not a good putter anyway, so it, it's a little bit of a handicap, 
But, I mean, actually, let's face it, I'm not that good a golfer. Most of the guys I play with aren't so good. Sorry, guys, if you're watching. Uh, so, I mean, if the course is in a little bit bad shape, it's really not going to affect our game. We're out there to have fun. Right. But they'll get better. I promise after the rains start, they'll get better. But one thing I would suggest for those greenskeepers, if you're watching, when you see that poana or little weeds pop up on a green, get those out of there. Have somebody, hire some teenager if you need to, to go around with a little sharp tool and take those little weeds out of that green because they spread yes. and it's hard to get a smooth oh, roll. Oh, yes. I mean, yeah. That, but we are right. lucky to live here and we're lucky to have the free golf mm -hmm. and it, it's part of it. We love it mm -hmm. and they will green up soon and everybody will be happier. From Tracy McMurray. Hi, Jerry and Linda. I have a question about mailbox addresses. When you live in the villages, are the home addresses and the postal station addresses the same? Or do you have a post office box-like address at the postal stations? First of all, Tracy, are you typing that on a typewriter? Did you see that? <laughs> That's hard to read. <laughs> oh, I when I was in college, I had to do all my research papers on a typewriter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but yours was like this. Yeah, I'm a hunting pecker. But you make a mistake, you have to get that either liquid paper where you daub it on there or you put that little ribbon in there with a white and <laughs> type your mistake again and uh, do it. But Tracy, uh, they have these things now called computers. And uh, you can, you probably selected that font. Bad choice, Tracy. But uh, enough of me bashing on you. Um, mailbox. The mailbox. I've got a, a pet peeve about that. Our mailboxes are the Dunedin Postal Station. And we have a house number here. When you write us a letter, you would put our house number and then the Villages Florida and our zip code and mail it. Then it has to go through a multi-step process where they get those letters. Then they look and see which post office box you have. And it's a totally different number. So my great idea was, why don't we just use our, since we have to go to the post office box anyway, yes. in our postal station, let's be able to use that number. Let's say we were post office box 1 million Dunedin postal station. Why can't we put that on a letter and when they send it, it goes to our station? Yeah. You know? Right. But no, you have to put your house number and then they have to convert it to a post office box and they put it into that little cubicle. And if you have something bigger, they'll put a key in there and you go get it out of the bigger box. Mm -hmm. And it works for us. It's not bad. I didn't think I'd get used to it, but guess what? We're used to it. We're used to it. No problem. <laughs> Gives us a chance to go out and take a cart ride. That's right. We like to do that cart ride. <laughs> this next question is from Preston in Tennessee. I know you fish, Jerry. Can you keep the fish? What kinds do you usually catch? Show some of those big ones. <laughs> Preston, good question. In fact, <laughs> I've gone a long time without fishing, but we went to Walmart last week, and what did I have you run in and get? Go in and get me some of those big old earthworms. Well, they're called night crawlers. Oh, yeah. yeah. Are they the same? <laughs> yeah, no, they're not the same. <laughs> uh, and I got some night crawlers, and I keep them in the fridge. How do you like that? Oh, my gosh. Uh, uh, I don't like them in there. I don't either, really. But what are you going to do? You can't. You yeah. got to keep them. Uh, got to keep them cold. So anyway, Preston, I went fishing night before last, mm -hmm. and I went to a local pond. Just jumped in the golf cart, threw two fishing poles in there, got my tackle box, grabbed my night crawlers, got my lawn chair. I'm ready to go. Yeah. Went down there. Went by myself. She's scared of alligators. Uh, uh I had to dog sit. I was busy. <laughs> I was busy. She's scared. She is scared. Anyway, had a good time. Fished for only about an hour, maybe an hour and a quarter. Caught eight fish, four nice catfish. You're seeing them there in the pictures. Four nice bluegill and had a good time. I release them all. Now, it's suggested that you release them. I don't think there's a law that says you couldn't keep them, but we release them and uh, they're there for the next time we go. Tim Coakley writes, I do have one question. I've read on some posts that if someone mentions there's a large gator in some pond in the villages, they'll trap the gator and kill it. I don't believe that for a minute. If that were the case, we wouldn't see so many gators here, and we love seeing them. Can you shed some light on this if there's any truth to this? Mm. Tim, I did some checking, and I called an alligator expert, and a very interesting person, by the way. And he told me that when they are trapped out of here, they don't relocate alligators uh, from the villages just because of the 
the trouble doing so, I guess. Hmm. And they're, they're eliminated. So you remember a couple weeks ago when that poor lady down in Fort Pierce got killed by an alligator? Yes. She was walking a dog, and I, I've seen the video, and it's terrible. Very sad. So her dog runs down to the water. That alligator comes out and uh, grabs, her, trying to grab the dog, ended up grabbing her and dragging her into the water, and I guess she drowned. But I think that was a death sentence for millions of alligators here in Florida because people are going to try to uh, get rid of them around their house. And I understand it. Mm -hmm. be, if you had a home on a pond or a lake mm -hmm. and you never knew if you could go out in their backyard without the fear of an alligator. Okay. So I get it. But if you're interested in alligators, this fellow that I talked to, that I got some great information. He goes by the name Alligator Rob, R-O-B-B. -B. You can look up his website. Just go to YouTube and look up Alligator Rob. But he was called by Chicago really? to to get an alligator out of one of their big community ponds there. <laughs> and they were so thrilled when he caught that alligator, and, and he did not kill this one. Uh, he safely rescued it, and I guess it was taken somewhere and, and released. Because alligators don't usually hang out in Chicago. It's cold up there. How did it get there? <laughs> it was a five-foot alligator. He was the hero of the town. He practically got the keys to the city. <laughs> Yeah. If you go to that Alligator Rob website on YouTube, you'll see that they let him throw out the first pitch at a Cubs game, <laughs> and they've got this Hero. massive fountain. <laughs> he got to be the one that switched it on. He was a hero. <laughs> Good job, Frank. And uh, they do get the, the alligators out of here, and it's usually not a good result for them. Mm. Another question about alligators. This is from Rick and Terry of Sterling, Illinois. With all the questions about alligators in the lakes and some being removed, I was wondering how they get there in the first place and if they maybe travel between the lakes at night. If so, are there any runover by cars when they're crossing? Have you ever heard of alligator roadkill? Okay, good questions. All of our lakes here are connected by giant culverts, mm -hmm. and we think that the alligators do travel those culverts. Right. In fact, uh, Alligator Rob told me that He's been through some culverts like that, and it's quite a harrowing experience. Oh, my yeah. goodness. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and as far as do we see them crossing roads and such, we'll see the pictures. Yes. People post of them going yeah. across a golf course right. or a road. We've never seen that ourselves. We've seen one in a neighbor's yard. It was only this big, very cute. Mm -hmm. And I did, riding my bike, I did see a dead one on the road. Yeah, it was a small baby. And it was a small one. Mm -hmm. So it's, it happens. They're here. They travel from pond to pond in search of mates in breeding season, yeah. in search of the water level they want maybe. And I've heard that when it really rains hard, they may travel across above ground, mm -hmm. you know, longer yeah. distances. So, right. Yeah, hope that answers your question. Mm -hmm. Here's one from Tacy Joe. She says, there's no R in my name. It's Tacy, not Tracy. Do you think buying a home here would be something more geared toward couples? Is it too much for a single person to manage? All right, Tacy. Good question. Yeah. You know what that depends on, Tacy? How much money do you have? You know, it depends. <laughs> That's true. There's some single people with a lot of money. Yes. So you can have fun here as a single. We mm -hmm. know there's one lives right there. We have there's a lot of friends. One, there's two that live right over there. Right. We have they a lot of They sit every night and talk, don't they? They do. They, they get together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Single people live here, and they have a single income, so it can be done, and we know some people that are quite happy doing it. And there are a lot of single clubs, so you'll, you'll fit in. Mm -hmm. I know single men that live here, too. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. This next one is from Becky. We have two single, divorced, 30-year-old kids, and when they hear we are coming to Florida, one or both of them might want to come out and visit us for Christmas. Is that allowed, like, for three to seven days? Becky, it's yeah, allowed. Of course. Uh, you can even have 30-year-olds living with you. Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. uh, perfectly fine. Grown kids can visit. In fact, once you're 30, you can go to any pool here. You can go to the sports pools, the neighborhood pools, sure. the regional pools. It's all good. So no worries about 30-year-olds visiting. However, when you read the Village's news, you'll see that they're involved in a lot of mishaps, a lot of altercations. There's often, they'll, they'll publish your name and your address when your 30-year-old gets into trouble in the villages. So you, you don't want that. You have to give those 30-year-olds a good talking to when they get here and say, No partying. Be on your best <laughs> behavior or you'll end up in the newspaper. 
Chris Torchala writes, I have a Star electric golf cart with a range of about 70, 80 miles. That should be enough to get me wherever I need to go in the villages. If I did find myself in a low battery situation, is there any place in the three town squares to plug my golf cart for a quick charge so I can get back home? You are right about the fact that 70 or 80 miles would suit you just fine. And the new lithium batteries yeah. are great. But we don't. We did some check-in and we couldn't find anywhere where you could go because that electricity, for one thing, is expensive. You'd have to pay for it. Mm. I don't know of any public charging stations. And the Star Cards, to get a charge, takes eight hours. Now, I think you were talking about just topping it off, maybe. I guess. We don't know that much about the electricity. Or, you know, just maybe putting in a 20% charge or something. But still, not real practical. I know they have them in some cities, but I don't think they have them here, Chris. Mm -mm. Just a minute to thank the great people that uh, gave to us through Super Thanks to help yes. keep our channel going. Yes. See your name scrolling up there. We appreciate every single one of you. We do. It's time for those shout outs. Paul and Lori are snowbirds. They've spent two winters here and they say that although they haven't seen us yet, they keep their eyes open. Thank you both for watching. This is Heather. Her mother Becky sent this in, and she says that they will be residents of the villages in a few short years. Brenda Coleman bumped into me at a rest stop halfway to Miami. We were going to our cruise. <laughs> That's right. And she was uh, with another bus line going to a different cruise, and she stopped me and said hello. But she lives right here in the villages, so hi, Brenda. And Nate and Aileen wrote, they say they have been to the villages and she sent me a picture of herself and her identical twin. Isn't it fun being an identical twin? I sure had a great life doing that. Judy Layton sent us this picture of her and her husband, Billy. They are two of our favorite people. Mm -hmm. We met them uh, on our first cruise last wow. year and here they are on another cruise. They live up in the wonderful village of Harmswood. It's beautiful up there, big, big yards. <laughs> And this is Diane and Zevi, and they met me at Bargains and Blessings. I hope you enjoyed your visit there. Tacy, remember we gave you one of her questions a little bit ago? She's renting a home in Fernandina, and she decided to come and check out our pool, the Dunedin Pool. Yeah. She says she's hoping to bump into us while she's here. <laughs> Tacy, I wish we had been there. I know. You'll have to come back. And this is Brian McGuire, and he's a frequent viewer. He's from Westerville, Ohio. Yeah, Brian, uh, we've noticed that you come in a lot, and you're up there on our top viewer list, yeah. and we thank you so much. Gizmo, are you ready? Are you awake? Are you fired up? <laughs> Take it away, buddy. Boy, it has been quite a week. I haven't really felt that great. I accidentally took some cat medication. Oh boy. Don't ask me how. <laughs> meow. Dad spent a hundred dollars on a new belt. A hundred dollars! It didn't even fit. <laughs> what a huge waste. Mom ran out of toilet paper. Now she has to use newspaper. Oh, she says times are rough. You probably remember my girlfriend, Sammy. She is sweet. Well, her stepbrother came to live with her. And he's about my age. He's really cute. And I'm so glad to have a playmate. He's a shit zoo. <laughs> you gotta be careful how you say that, don't you? Well, listen, everybody. Thanks for the jokes this week. I love y'all. Good job. Good job. <laughs> he is so popular. <laughs> That's going to do it for this week's edition of... Bag Monday. Be sure and tune in for Thursday's show. I'm working on it so hard. It's yeah. a makeover show. Linda went through a, a big total makeover. 
and they filmed about eight hours of footage and I've got to sift through all that and give you a 20 or 25 minute video. <laughs> it's murder. <laughs> it's really cute though. You're going to love it. <laughs> if you liked our video today, please press that like and subscribe button and share it with all your friends. Until next time. See you when you get here.